Well, there are a number of different reasons uh, why I spent my last six years with her. Um, I think originally I began with this very feminist attitude that I want to make a, a, a film about this important, iconic artist, uh, the most important artist of the 20th century in the Middle East who happened to be a woman, and to show off to the Western world how uh, who has refused, uh, reduced our image to uh, uh, people of fanaticism and violence and terrorism, how at once we had a woman being the leading artist. And in fact, uh, when she passed away, four million people went to her funeral, etc. So it was a very uh, kind of uh, selfish and feminist point of view. Um, but during the process of making the film, I think that uh, something else happened to me, which was I discovered that in many ways my fascination with Omokosum, in many ways during the process I found the fascination that I had about Omokosum or let's say obsession uh, in a very subconscious level was I, I was looking up to her to find some answers about myself. And in many ways as a very small artist, I found that we, there were certain things parallel in the way that, you know, um, I as a female artist had to question and balance my desire for a predictable female, you know, responsibility as a mother and traditional life and also my absolute 100% devotion to my art. And, and the problem that I had sort of navigating between the two. And, um, you know, I, I really wondered how she managed that. You know, I, I have to say that um, at the beginning, when I embarked on this project of making a film about Omokosum, I, I really think that it started for two reasons. I wanted to rebel against my own uh, past work, which was always uh, based on Iranian narratives and the socio-political issues of my own country. And it felt like a new beginning of focusing on a new culture and that I was foreign to. I thought this was really exciting. And she was a great subject because I've been obsessed with music and women. So it just, just made a lot of rational sense. And then um, I, I listened to her. I remember it was like one summer I promised myself that I would only listen to Omoko Sun's music just to really get into the core of her emotions and music. And, and I have to say that um, I have now certain absolute favorite songs that I, I, I could cry to. But it's not, it wasn't something that it was there at, from the beginning. I had to acquire a taste for it. And, and um, I, I also find her very cold as a person. Uh, I'm just the opposite of Omoko Sung because I'm very vulnerable and very nervous, very emotional. I show my vulnerability to my audience. Yeah, and she was like a rock and she worked all her life to remain like an image, you know. So we are very opposite in nature, and uh, I still remain myself. I have not learned anything from her in that respect. Um, I think she really uh, was in control of her career, uh, where I'm not. I'm just sort of going with the flow. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 in a way, I, I just take a lot of risk. I think she uh, didn't take a lot. I mean, she took risk in many ways, but she really, seduce her audience in a certain way. She just knew how to hold them tightly for herself and she wanted them until she died and they loved her. But for me, I'm reaching for new audience, switching from art to film, you know, to opera, and I, I'm taking big leaps from Iran to Egypt. Uh, I, I, I'm doing things that it, it really brings me to close to failure. I mean, in the sense that I could make work that uh, it's unsubstantial and you know and and so I feel in that way I'm also very different than her but I think the most important thing is my discovery from her is that I will never be a myth and she was a myth and I think there are very very few people who go down the history as mythical artists 